so I learned something about oh, a few minutes ago, actually, at this point. Uh, 12 years of doing this, I didn't know that even if you accidentally <laughs> break an NVIDIA embargo, they can, uh, they can arrest you. So, uh, yeah. Let's do this. Oh, this, this car. Okay. This one. Introducing the SoCal Tech Fair taking place May 3rd and 4th. This is something I've been wanting to do for many years and we're finally doing it. So we've teamed up with iBuyPower and Height to create a community event where we're gonna have live music, we're gonna have tech panels, we're gonna have tech game shows up on stage. Other content creators are gonna be joining me. We're gonna have a tech swap meet too where we'll be selling uh, our lightly used parts that would definitely serve other people better than they're serving us sitting on our shelves. So we're trying to give you some good deals. We got food, we got games, we got activities, we've got a lot of sponsors and brands that are involved. We even have some racing simulators later set up where you can win prizes and stuff. So for full ticket and uh, event information, check the link in the description below and we hope to see you there. In all seriousness though, a huge apology to the other reviewers for having our <laughs> review embargo go live a day before. Uh, confusion on our part, it's my fault and I definitely apologize for that. So we took the video down obviously. So some of this information you're gonna get today, forgive me if you've heard it before. You probably already heard it from all the other reviewers anyway, but we're gonna kind of take an interesting perspective on this one because I kind of got a chance at this point to be able to sort of just like see what the other folks are saying to see if what it kind of aligns with our pin. You already know my opinion if you saw the video that's now not online anymore <laughs> where I had some final conclusions. Uh, I have a feeling though I'm gonna need something a little stronger than coffee this morning, so we're just gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna morning drink, but trust me, if there was ever a, re a review season that has made me want to drink, it's been this one. So, all right, here we go. 56 DTI, 16 gigabyte. Don't forget there is an eight gigabyte version, which this time around Nvidia has not sent out, as far as I can tell, to anyone. Uh, 4060 Ti had an eight gig and a 16 gig version. And even back then, absolutely positively shouldn't have existed. Now I'll say this, and I've already talked about this a little bit in our review, which you'll see tomorrow again. Um, I understand now why there was so much pushback on our initial 4060 Ti video, because our, we revamped our entire testing suite through here. Um, you guys, I'm sure, have gotten tired of hearing us talk about Steve helping us kind of come up with some ideology, not copy Gamers Nexus ideology, but come up with our own and using some of the foundation of what they have found to be best practices. And so we've come up with our own, but it's allowed us to get much deeper into a lot of the specs, especially when we start comparing things and doing more deep dives on things like frame time and memory saturation and memory throughput and bandwidth and bus speed and all that sort of stuff. So our bus bandwidth and throughput speed. The 4060 was really just hot garbage. It really was, especially the eight gigabyte version. Uh, so let's talk about some of the, the specs here. So 5060 Ti is a GB206 core, has 4,608 CUDA cores and a 2,572 megahertz boost clock. Now, obviously it'll boost higher than that, uh, based on power limit, temp limit, uh, and voltage headroom. So what you're gonna notice with these reviews though is that they're moving into tomorrow is that there is absolutely no Founders Edition version of it, which is very strange. So 5060 Ti doesn't have a Founders Edition card. You're gonna notice AIB part or AIB cards, um, PNY, ASUS, whatever board partners are when it comes to MSRP. So MSRP on this card is $429 for the 16 gigabyte variant. The eight gigabyte variant is $379 or $50 cheaper. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever that the eight gig card should exist. And I'm gonna say this now, I said it in my review and I'm gonna say it again. The 16 gigabyte card should have been the 400, or excuse me, the $379 card. And there should be absolutely no $429 version of the card at all. It should just be 16 gigs, no eight gigs at all, period. GDDR7 or not. I'll talk about some supporting um, information as to why I believe that could be the case and why Nvidia could do it and is probably choosing not to. Anyway, if we do a generational comparison of specs though, uh, the 4060 Ti was on AD206, 4,352 CUDA cores at 2535 megahertz, so roughly the same frequency. So that's 256 less CUDA cores uh, for the 4060 Ti versus 5060 Ti, and 3060 was 50, or 4864 CUDA, but as you know, that's GA104, which is also, that's Ampere, that's Samsung's fab, their process, and it's much, much more gimped at 1665 megahertz. It's crazy, kind of crazy how we jumped a whole gigahertz faster by going back to the TSMC node versus the, uh, Samsung Note. RT cores, fourth gen RT cores found in the 5060 Ti, 36 of them. Third gen RT cores in the 4060 Ti, 34. And then 3060 Ti has 38 of second gen RT cores. So again, 
you're gonna notice something on paper here is that the 60 Ti or the 3060 Ti has the most of just about everything on paper, but it's gonna be the slowest card when you see it in the reviews. Uh, and that's just because one process improvements going down to the 4N uh, process for TSMC, which I believe it's seven nanometer on Samsung. I could be wrong, but I believe it's seven. Phil can correct it on screen if it's not. Um, and a major, major upgrade to the RT cores of uh, fourth gen versus second gen. So all those 3060 Ti has more of almost everything on paper. It's more of older stuff, which is less efficient, way less efficient and less powerful and hugely gimped by the core clocks. Uh, Tensor cores, 5060 Ti is 144, fifth gen cores. 4060 Ti is 136 of the fourth gen cores and 3060 Ti is 152 of the third gen Tensor Cores, don't forget, Tensor Cores debuted in the Titan Volta, which put it ahead of any of the gaming cards, which is why the Tensor Cores are one generation newer than RT, because Volta did not have RT. Memory, this is where you really start to wonder, how much does it truly cost for a brand like Nvidia to implement memory? It seems to be the thing that we are talking about the most right now, and it seems to be the thing that they're using to try and like justify more expensive tiers and less expensive tiers and such. So for instance, 5060 Ti, this version we're reviewing, is the 16 gigabyte GDDR7. There is an eight gigabyte available, should not be, but anyway, uh, it's 128 bit bus at 448 gigabytes per second of, of, of bandwidth. So it is pretty fast given 128 bit bus. Now we could spend a whole video talking about bus width and the whole, remember how it was like 592 bit for uh, the like 590 or yeah, 590 and then the, or 580, whatever. Like then they dropped down to like 256 and then 392 and then 128. That is important, but it really becomes for me personally, less important than what is the, what is the number at the end of the day that that memory configuration can send and hold for the GPU to have access to. Obviously the amount of RAM is very important, but the speed of the RAM is just as important. So that's why if you compare it to the 3060 Ti, which has eight gigabytes of GDDR6, no 16, variant, 16 gigabyte variant for the 3060 Ti, but there was a GDDR6X variant, which was very odd, uh, but I digress. It was a 256 bit bus at the same 448 gigabytes per second of memory speed. So the 3060 Ti was like leagues ahead of the 4060 Ti in terms of memory because the 4060 Ti, the eight gigabyte version, the 16 gigabyte would be the same. Uh, 128 bit bus at 288 gigabytes per second. So it became extremely gimped when you talk about higher resolutions and games that specifically have high, res, uh, not just high resolutions, but higher res textures, uh, a lot more happening in the post-processing, the RAM does start to become very important. So that's why I say, kind of looking at these specs and un understanding them better and having tested things like memory speed and what happens when it gets saturated and we start doing our more deep dive of frame times and all that sort of stuff, it becomes incredibly obvious why the 4060 was a terrible generational upgrade from the 3060 Ti. Because on the surface, having TSMC back, you know, uh, on 8106, you know, you had 512 less CUDA cores at 4352 versus 4864, but you also get that megahertz jump in clock speed up to 2535 boost before any sort of additional boost. But then you just, you cut it off at the knees with the memory that they chose. So we understand now why there was such pushback on that, that initial 4060 Ti uh, review that was done. And um, you know, we, we get it now. So this is one, it's one of the many reasons why I went, we need to go back to the drawing board and the way we do our GP reviews. And I think you guys have noticed that. We've had a lot of practice this first quarter of the year because we've not only had to test the 50 series cards as well as all the regression testing of all the older cards to be able to have something to compare it to. In fact, we've even discovered some stuff with this most review recent review cycle of the 5060 Ti that we've been like, that, that's a 4060 Ti box, but the 5060 Ti has allowed us to realize we still need to make changes to our tests and actually exclude some benchmarks and add some others because of the way certain architectures and certain games respond with certain cards. It becomes a valid test to talk about the weird inconsistencies of certain titles, but it becomes impossible for us to give you real A-B comparisons because of the fact that certain titles with certain cards and they fluctuate too much. To, they're outside the realm of consistent, which means we can't use that data. 
but anyway, moving on. So 3060 Ti was a 200 watt card and it pulls more than that under load. 4060 Ti was much more efficient and 160 watts, but it was barely an improvement in performance. That is what Nvidia leaned on heavily in the 40 series launch versus 30 series was its efficiency gains. Again, the other half of the coin of why you guys were so pissed at us in our review of saying, hey, you know what, at least it's a little faster for the same price. And that was, that was definitely the wrong men mentality to take because Nvidia leaned on the fact that, hey, it's 40% or excuse me, 40 watts less power hungry than the 3060 Ti. And it's like 9% faster, which is okay. I guess that's a little more for a little less, but it just was not the generational improvement that people were expecting to see considering how 4090 down through like 4070 compared to 30 series, 70 series and up cards. Like those were pretty big gains. There was also pretty big price jumps along with those gains. So. You just take the performance to dollar, you know, performance per dollar bracket and you just scoot the whole thing forward. It really is the same. If you're getting the same FPS per dollar, it just costs more to get more FPS. It's not really an improvement. It's just more for more. It's not the generational improvements we're used to seeing, which is where the price bracket stays the same and the performance scoots out 25%. That wasn't what happened. And it's not necessarily what's even been happening with 50 series either. And you guys will see in the review videos, um, it's some are great, some are not. So, but we can't talk about any of that today. What I can't talk about today is the fact that they upped that power limit once again from 160 watt to 180 watt. So it's interesting that you know this time around the the whole premise of let's lift the power and in 5090s instance let's melt the cables more efficiently. Let's melt both ends. You know what? It's like let's not just melt the GPU side at 450 watts to 500 watt graphics card. You know what? Let's just say, let's do this right and let's just melt the whole goddamn cable along the way and let's take the power supply out with it. Because you know, that's the Nvidia way. Remember, the more you buy, the more you save. And now we're moving on to power supplies with that. Anyway, I digress. That's a little off the rails, but probably still relevant. 50 series in this instance is kind of like having the same price parity as 4060. And in my opinion, that's not good enough. I feel, that the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte card should be $379, which is what the eight gigabyte card cost. Let me tell you why. Although things are a bit volatile to say the least when it comes to pricing and all of that, all of these prices are obviously pre-tariff. There's no way to account for whatever the hell that number is gonna be by the time the video goes live. Like I would say, eh, you know, within a day or two, you're pretty safe. Within an hour or two, things can change. So again, the video was very, keen on pointing out these are all pre-tariff pricing, which is how it works, actually. Price, the price is always gonna be pre-tariff and the number's dependent on the country it's going to and what the end number's gonna be. So we can't account for all of that. All of the volatility has hurt Nvidia's stock, but it has absolutely uh, remained profitable. And let, let me just take a look at some figures here for a second. At the start of this exact, let's say April of 2023, the Nvidia stock price was $27 today. Exactly two years later, even with the declines, it's $113. I still don't know why I don't buy Nvidia stock. I should, but anyway, moving on, there's profit. And we know the profit is not being driven specifically by the selling and purchasing of enthusiast and or gamer grade hardware. This is from their deep learning uh, machines that they build. This is their AI implementation. This is the chat GPT stuff. That is what's getting investors to spend money. Now we all know that that architecture and everything they have, have created for AI is graphics driven in terms of the architecture. That was built on the gaming heritage of Nvidia. That is why Jen Sun says, all of this with AI is the house that GeForce built. GeForce enabled AI to reach the masses. AI is the house that GeForce built. That is directly out of the man's mouth himself. The gaming community and, and the products that they created, that, that encompassing effort of, we, we can't say as gamers, well, we bought it, therefore you owe us. It's, it doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a transaction. It goes both ways. You got something, you gave something. It is a two-way street. But because of the give and take of money and goods, and it was good goods, led to where they are today. Nvidia can afford to make little on these cards. These cards, all the way up to the 5090, they are not Nvidia's bread and butter. It is not Nvidia's cash printing 
uh, division of the company. That's AI. So can you please, for once, stop taking the Ingridia approach of saying, let's maximize the amount of money that we can make on these graphics cards. And guess what? The markups are not huge. They're not. But the prices can be better. There's a, there's a lot of ways the prices can be better. And I think if you truly want to show as NVIDIA that you care about this community and not just, hey, thanks for the ride, but now we're on to the next thing, extend that olive branch to say, we are going to cr try and get back to core pricing elements that are for gamers by a company that was built by gaming enthusiasts for gamers that has now moved on to something else. All right, this went right way off the rails. It was supposed to just be talking about the uh, like specs of it or whatever. Okay, so let's just go ahead and wrap this up right now. Uh, the 16 gigabyte version is the only one that should matter at $379, it's where it should be. It's priced 429, it should be 379. The 379, eight gigabyte, uh, it's being dubbed the e-waste edition. It truly is at this point. We've already showed you why eight gigabytes is not gonna be enough for the future. It's also weird that you can get 5060 Ti and 16 gigabyte version in the 4070 or excuse me, the 5070 is 12. So anyway, there you go. Don't buy the eight gigabyte, shouldn't exist. Um, who knows how much they're gonna actually end up being. I tried to look online, I actually can't find any of the SKUs on there. Um, maybe Micro Center learned from last time, placeholder prices just lead to all kinds of confusion and headaches, don't do that. I also don't think this is necessarily a card worth going and waiting in a line for, but everyone's scenario is gonna be a bit different. I can tell you right now, yeah, I guess I can't really tell you anything. <laughs> I don't know what to say. On paper, the specs do seem like they've learned a little bit from the 3060 Ti to 4060 Ti, but obviously you'll just have to wait and see the performance reviews, again, where you can determine whether or not it is a generational uplift that means something to you. Thank God there's only one card left in this review cycle. I really kind of hope they don't do a 50-50-50. <gasps> the crazy card! Oh, that'll be 51-50. Damn! Damn it. We'll just start dubbing it the 5150 edition if anyone buys that card, because it, it's just it's cash grab, money grab stuff. Anyway, Intel, please bring back the uh, the 580. It was actually a really good card, and this is now encroaching down into that price point, and we already know what the 580 did to the 4060 Ti, so please. All right, it's time to go. Just, I'm, I'm, over, I'm over it.